Now, with so much turmoil, plagues, controversy, racism, all types of things that are happening now. I don't know about you, but I want to hear from God. I just believe that he is allowing what he's allowing. And I think it serves simply as a reminder to us that we need him. We might not be consciously aware of it, but a lot of people have excommunicated him. In simple terminology, they put him on the shelf. And then a lot of us use him like he's a spare tire. Only when we got a flat. Only when we need something from him. And some have uh, positioned him to be our Santa Claus. But I believe that what's happening now is simply letting us know that he's a sovereign God. It's letting us know that he's in charge. It's letting us know that he's the one that's keeping this world turning to where she has not lost a second, nor a tenth of a second. And as a matter of fact, if you want to get down to the brass taxes, if you believe his word, he said in his word, he said, you can't lose one hair on your head and he does not know it. Yeah. So he knows the number of the hairs that are on our head. And I, I just think it, it behooves us and cautions us to realize that our God is the one true living God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We, we like to thank uh, this praise ministry for lifting up the Lord and in song and for setting an atmosphere uh, in this place of worship. And prayerfully, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that you're listening in and your worshiping with them has set the atmosphere where you are now uh, abiding. God has something to say, and I am saying to you over again, as the Apostle Paul would say it, he said, I beseech you, I beg you. I admonish you that we would be attentive to the Word of God, the messages of God, and allow our spirit to be sensitive enough that it's going to strengthen us, it's going to give an array of hope, it's going to lift us. It's going to motivate us and that it will sustain us in such an hour as this. Let, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this another wonderful day. All day throughout the day, you've kept us. You've watched over us all day throughout the day you have led us you guided us you've given us help and strength we're yet in our right minds so we want to thank you 
that we take this time out to give you some praise. We, we take this time out that we can be used by you to speak to your people. We take this time to say thank you. You're so awesome. You're so marvelous and you're so magnificent. And Father, we say to you now that we are trusting you in the midst of it all. So Father, allow the Holy Spirit to continue to comfort us. To continue to reveal unto us the mysteries of the kingdom. To deliver us from fear, anxiety, despair. Deliver us from what's not of you and what's not a part of our spiritual makeup. You told us you've given us power. You've given us love and a sound mind. And so I thank you tonight. Father, I thank you tonight for just being God in our lives. Now as we hear and receive in our heart, let this word find lodging in our hearts so that we can stand boldly, we can stand firm, and testify about this crucified and resurrected Savior that we can stand with confidence and speak with influence that our Christ is alive and he's well. We honor you, Father. We honor you. We honor you tonight. We honor you tonight. Knowing that we're nothing without you, we honor you tonight. That everything we are and everything we shall be is because of what you have seeded in us. We honor you tonight. We want to be all you want us to be. So we say to you tonight, we're yours. Try us and see if we're not completely yours. Father, that I honor may give you glory. That the glory that you bring out of us will glorify you. That whatever men see of us, it'll edify you. It'll build you up. Because they see you in us. In the person of Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's in Jesus' authority, in his precious name, we do pray. Amen. I want to talk a few minutes tonight about lifting Jesus. Lifting Jesus. I, I want to start in St. John chapter 3. And I believe it's 3 and 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. 
Let me give you a couple other passages to tack on to that. St. John chapter 8. Let's turn over a couple pieces. Chapter 8, verse 28. Then Jesus said unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then ye shall know that I am he. And I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things to you. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Now I'll flip over another piece to chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. The word of God for all the people of God that brings steadfastness to our believing walk. Just a few minutes tonight. I'm not going to hold you long tonight. Lifting Jesus. In chapter 3, Jesus entertains a night visitor, a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews, comes to him in the night hour, in the night shift, and Jesus says to him, you must be born again. Now, it was perplexing to Nicodemus. It was, it was challenging to him because Nicodemus saw it from a natural perspective. He said, I am old. How can I re-enter my mother's womb and be born again? Jesus goes on and further to say, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Now, now notice in verse 3, and I believe it's in verse 6, he tells him that the born again experience is connected with understanding, perceiving, seeing the kingdom of God. Get this, people of God. It takes the new birth to have any level of comprehension as to what God wants and expects of us as his children, we are to establish his kingdom on earth. Now I need you to hear this. How do we do that? We do it 
by lifting Jesus. Let, let me say to you, Jesus was a, a man that was misunderstood by most of the Jewish community. He was rejected by the Jewish leaders. But watch this. He says, so as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. It was strange to me as to why he pulled this passage. And said, as he lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Now let's get the story now so we, we can have some connection. Israel were murmuring and complaining. After God had delivered them out of the hands of the enemy with a mighty right hand. Now they're in the wilderness and Israel is murmuring and complaining. Oh my God, how easily we forget when God delivers us, when God sets us free, when, when God liberates us, how easily do we forget when God brings us out of one thing and something else is facing us. Now we are murmuring and complaining again. Re not remembering what God had just done. How he brought them out. And watch this. It was the puzzling thing. He brought them out miraculously. He brought them out. Showing Israel his sovereignty. He brought them out. Showing them that he's always in charge. No, no matter what he allows. It, it's never out of his control. No, no matter whatever happens. It's not caught him by surprise. I need you to understand that. Because it seems as if. That what we're going through, that the people of God think that this has caught God off guard. Can I talk to you a few minutes and I'm going to leave you alone. Uh, because I really need you to grab this. We, we tend to think that this is above God's pay grade. Yeah. We, we tend to think that, that he can't handle this and, and we we'll murmur and complain about what's going on and allow what's going on to dictate how much we trust God. I'm going to talk to you a little while because I'm going to stir up the ant did and I'm going to sit down. Yeah. People of God, listen, listen to me, please. Hear what the Spirit has to say. I know God is allowing what we are dealing with to test us. Let, let, let me say something else. The test is not for him. Y'all miss that. Y'all miss that. He's not testing us. To see for himself where we are. He's testing us so we can see where we are. You, you got to get this. God, God doesn't ask questions that he doesn't already have answers to. And God does not allow problems to come that he has not already solved. He, he has a solution. He, he's that kind of God. But now I, I, I say to you again, it behooves us to be honest with ourselves. Because if we can't get honest with self, 
It's very difficult to matriculate to the next level. It, it, it's very difficult for us to excel in the kingdom of God. They were murmuring and complaining after all God had done in delivering them. Listen, 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 listen. It is something that, uh, that I would, that every last one of you would, would take notice of. You professing salvation to be saved. We're saved by grace in faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I, I need to tell you something. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can swallow this, maybe it might choke you. But get this. If God has saved you, he can do anything. Wow. Uh -huh. I feel like y'all would not want me on that. You cause, cause, cause if you get honest with you and, and know you and know the kind of person that you are and, and how you were before he saved you, then, then you ought to be able to testify tonight. If he saved me, he can save anybody. If he saved me, he can do anything. And if, if you really get honest. See, that right there alone should be a stimulus for your trust in God. Mm -hmm. my, my sis, my, my sis. So in the midst of that murmuring and complaining, God got sick of it. Yeah. Now, now, now that's a feeling, though God does not operate by feelings. But, but that's the way of expressing that, that God was tired of their murmuring. So he allows serpents to come into the camp. Get this. They're in the camp and they're biting people. People are dying. People are dying. People are dying. Does it sound familiar? Now, people are dying. Now, so much so that I will give them credit for this. They did have enough sense to go and talk to Pastor Moses. Yeah. <clears throat> Pastor Moses, will you petition God? on our behalf. Yes, Pastor Moses, being the good shepherd he was, went before God on the behalf of the people. Yeah, yeah. Now watch this. Y'all got to watch God closely because if you're watching him through human rationale, you will always miss him. Watch him closely here. Watch the instructions that he gives to Pastor Moses. Moses, get, get you uh, some brass and shape it in the form of a serpent and wrap it around a stick. And take that brazen serpent that's on that stick and hold it up in the air. And everybody that looked up at the brazen serpent on the stick shall live. Oh my God, what, what was on God's mind? Why would he use such an instrument to bring life to the people? Now wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm a little confused here. Let, let me look at it, let me look at it again. Was it not the snakes that was biting and killing them? Come on, come on. But, but he tells Pastor Moses to make a brazen snake and put it on a stick and hold it up in the air. Oh wow. What is God 
telling them. Watch this. You got to see Jesus as, as God brings forth shadows in the Old Testament. You got to learn how to see Jesus. Here it is. What they thought was destroying them is really what was going to give them life. Because what they rejected, they were going to put it on a stick. But they looked upon him as a serpent. They even called him Beelzebub. So you got to be careful about how you deal with Jesus because the Lord, he has a way of doing things that if you won't get in touch with him from a spiritual perspective, you will miss his feelings. Say so. It was, watch this, here's how Isaiah put it. Let me put it to you this way. Isaiah put it like this. He said it was the chief cornerstone that the builders reject. Yeah. What they rejected became the strength of the building. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Teach us, teach us. Yeah. He tells them, look up at the serpent. Here's, here's what he says. Yes, sir. Here's what he says right here. He says, just as Moses, John 3 and 14. Lifted up the serpent. Now watch this. He's talking to Nicodemus about eternal life. And, and it seems like an interruption or an intrusion when he put this in there. But he was really explaining to him, Nicodemus, you boys have rejected me like Israel rejected the serpent. Teach us. Said, but but get lifted up. Yes, sir. So as the Son of Man is lifted up. And if everybody will look at him, they can live. Oh God. If they will look at him, look up at him, and they can live. Listen, listen, this is the way he says. Whosoever believe it. Now, I'm, 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 I'm coming after the core of your belief. I, I want to inoculate. That, that ain't a big word. Here it is. I want to give you a shot of belief serum. I want to vaccinate you with another level of belief. Because what's in your belief system determines how you act. Mm -hmm. our, our belief system is, is what has been poured into us that we received as Truth. It might be a lie, but we received it as the truth. Oh. Y'all didn't catch that now, because everything we believe ain't necessarily the truth. Are y'all here? But it's what we believe. So that becomes our belief system, and, and then we operate in accordance to what we believe. So as a man thinking what he believed in his heart, your belief system, so is he. So is a man thinking in his heart. See, here, here's what I'm saying to you. I, I'm not saying this to you from, from a place of being critical and, 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 and a place to belittle, but I'm saying to you, what you believe in your heart will determine how you act. 
I need, I need you. Somebody, somebody have got to learn to trust God in a chaotic, trying time. You got to believe God. This is because God wants to reveal Jesus. Okay. Let, let, me, let me put you this way. If, if we look at this Bible concerning the gospel times, you'll discover that Israel was in bondage. Though she was given a certain latitude of freedom. Okay? And put it another way. She was under the Roman Empire. They governed the known world. Caesar was the emperor. And, and under the Roman Empire, the Jews were given certain latitude to worship their God. But they were yet in money. I said that to say this. Those were chaotic times, trying times. Watch this. And the abundance that they were under caused them to miss the Messiah. Uh -huh. Watch this. Let me help you. They looked and were expecting the Messiah. But they weren't expecting him to act like Jesus. Okay? They take it a little bit further. They were expecting him to come in, throw his weight around, and generate an army that would overthrow the Roman Empire. That, that's why the boys that were walking with him said, Lord, when you're you coming to your kingdom, I'm going to sit on the right hand and, and the other on the left. That they were looking at an earthly king. He kept trying to tell them, my kingdom is not of this world. No. What I want y'all to do is bring my kingdom into the world, because my kingdom is not of this world. Listen, I, I didn't come here to beat up somebody. I, I want to set you free uh, and at a degree that even if you're locked up, you're still free. Yeah. Yes, uh huh. Even if all hell is breaking loose in your life, you can still shout hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Bless his name. Yeah. Even if chaos is all around you, you can lift holy hands unto the Lord and say, the Lord is my king. So, he was speaking and saying to Nicodemus, except I be lifted up. Except I be lifted up. My brothers and sisters, the question has to come because there, there are so many that are creating controversy with them that will lift him. Yeah. Because and I'm talking about us. Just for Born again folk. Save folk. We will create controversy with them that are lifting him. Because we think, they think we have gone overboard. Now I need you to hear this. I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not talking at nobody. I ain't messing with nobody. I'm not drawing, drawing any judgmental decisions. I'm just saying what the Lord is telling me to say because I just believe he want to help us. Because here it is. 
See, look at what's going on and, and notice how nobody is in charge of what's going on. And he's establishing the fact that all of my help come from the Lord. And that, that's what he's doing. He, he's establishing the fact. And, and see, watch this. Here he is. You got to start lifting him. Here in the front 
to the world. You ought to just stop too tired and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say it, sir. You, you, you can't sit here and tell me that. That when Jesus made a change, it was temporary. You, you can't say you didn't feed that to me because I watched him in my own life. I watched him in the life of others. I watched him elevate those that folk had counted out. I watched him lift up those that folk called nobodies. I watched him that raised them up and come from the poor side of town. I watched him raise them up that the Caucasian said was less dominant than they are. I watched God. Because he said, if I, when I be lifted up from the earth, I told you, you got to watch how God deals with things. Satan thought he put a stop to Jesus. When he got him hung out there on Mount Calvary, they nailed his right hand. The other friend got on the right hand. They nailed his left hand. They nailed him in his. But I heard him say, if I, when I, be lifted up from the earth, I will, he said, I will draw all men unto me. Well, Paul picked it up in the spirit. And here's what Paul said. If they had known yeah. oh. the results yeah. from hanging him on my cow, yeah. they never would have killed him. Because yeah. I come by and tell you, he cannot lie. He's changing the lives of men everywhere. All walks of life. He has the power to turn your life around. He has the power to raise you up. Can he do it? Won't he do it? Yes, sir. Yes. I'm sorry. Listen, 
I believe this with all my heart. The Holy Ghost is revealing so that we can see Jesus like we've never seen him before. Listen, I've been talking to you then, saying to you that Jesus is, what's this? Exalted and seated on the right hand of the Father. Now I need you to hear this, please. Please, because he's pushing us to a greater belief. It's all right where you are, but I'm telling you, he's pushing us to a greater belief. Just don't say that. Don't say where you are, because he's pushing us to a greater place of belief. Listen, he has been our mediator. Some of us, some of us might not hear that. You might not hear that. You might not hear that. So let me explain it. That simply means when we are not where we should be in Him, He mediates for us. He's our advocate. And He says to the Father, Father, I, I, I know he missed it there. And I know she missed it over there. But they're going to come through. Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. They're they going to come through. They are going to make you proud. That's what he's been doing. Now, watch this. I'm telling you, please hear this. Now, he's saying to the Father, Daddy, I got them at the threshold now. They're at the threshold now. We ready to cross over. We ready to cross over into the promise. We're ready to cross over into power. We are ready to cross over. Where they are going to lift my name. They're ready for us to release power that's in them. It's going to bring glory to your name. It's going to make the world know that you sent them. And it's going to bring glory to your name. They're, they're at the threshold right now. Yeah. Satan, Satan messing with them. He doesn't want them to cross over. He, he doesn't want them to step into the problem. Because he know that once they step in, there ain't no turning around. So he's trying to hold them back. But daddy, they're going fall. They're going fall. They're going fall in my name. Please hear people of God, I'm done. You've got to lift Jesus. You've got to lift Jesus. You've got to lift Jesus. 
You're, you're living in a society that does not condone it. But you got to lift Jesus. Yes, sir. Do it anyway. You got to lift Jesus. Because he'll draw all men. He'll draw all men under him. I don't care what their, what their problems are, he'll draw them under him. That day they hung him on Calvary. The Roman centurion. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know what he saw. I don't know what motivated him. But he looked up and said, surely this must be Yes, sir. The Son of God. Surely. He'll draw. He'll draw. People of God, please allow him to push you into another round of faith. Take this word. Access it. Utilize it. Apply it. So that Jesus his name will reign superior. For there he is no other name. There he is no other name. Like the name of Jesus. Please sit tonight. Let me let me extend the privilege of the church. Please hear. If you're not saved, it's just all in his name. Just tell him, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I'm open to you. Forgive me of my sins. You are my personal Savior. Yeah. He'll come in. Oh, yes, he will. You, ain't, you don't have to try and change nothing. When he come in, He'll start serving eviction notices. Yes, he will. Everything that'll keep you from not believing, he'll start putting it out. If you don't believe it, ask J. Iris when he went in his house. And everything in there that didn't believe, when he told them, she's not dead. She, she just taking a nap. I'm, I'm going to wake up out of this nap. The book said they laughed him to scorn. And he said to them, Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! You, you, you don't know who you're talking to. You don't know who you're fooling with. Get out! And he spoke to the young lady. He said, Damsel, arise. Jesus is calling for some folk to rise now. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, sir. If you can believe, he's calling you to arise. What had you in bondage can't hold you no longer? What had a death grip on you? It's got to let you go. He said, arise. You can believe tonight. Please, please show me. Please show me. Please, please. Set your heart forward. Repentance. It, it's, it's nothing wrong with changing your mind about some stuff because that's a part of the process. You got to change your mind in order to shift gears. Yeah, it's part of the process. It's part of the process. Let, let, it, let it pour in. Some new stuff. Listen, thirdly, the power.
power of God is in men. I'm talking about resurrecting power. Life-giving power. Healing power. Delivering power. Weaning of the soul. Power. Correction of the mind. Power. Heart fixing. Power. He'll change your life. He'll change your life. Let his power reign in your life. He'll guide you. He'll direct you. He'll talk to you. Your steps are ordered. He'll keep you in a path of righteousness. Watch this. For his name's sake. Lift him. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Lift him. Listen. Here's, here's some closing comments and remarks.